Evelyn. Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church on this brand new day of a brand new year, 2023. Today we're going to be celebrating the new year uh, here in, in uh, our worship. Um, that's going to be the theme for today, as you would suppose. So let's begin our worship this morning uh, with Hymn 916. Today, Your Mercy Calls Us. Mercy 
merciful Father, we have strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed what we have devised and desired in our hearts. We have offended you and sinned against your holy law. We have done those things that we should not have done, and we have not done those things that we should have done. Have mercy on us, Lord. Spare us, forgive us, and restore us according to your promises in Christ Jesus. God, our merciful Father, has forgiven all your sins. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be a Redeemer and Savior. Jesus paid the penalty for our guilt by His death on the cross and freed us from death by His resurrection from the grave. We have peace with God now and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
Our first lesson from the Word of our Lord on this, the first Sunday after the season or festival of, of Christmas, taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. The readings this morning all reflect the theme of this being the new day of a new year rather than the circumcision and the naming of Jesus Sunday. It is definitely a very big temptation for many of us, especially for the young, youngsters here, to put off preparing for eternity until your rocking chair years. Oh, we got plenty of time. Yet it may be more difficult to do this as one grows older and older. The preacher here in Ecclesiastes gives us a powerful and some vivid images of old age and approaching death to rouse us from complacency or resignation due to troubles. We are to address the matter of our relationship with our Lord and Savior now, while we are still young. If we wait till the 11th hour, we might not have the opportunity. Yet the same God who consigned us to the grave because of sin also has promised us that we will be rescued from the grave and His eternal judgment. Though hearing the word in our youth, through hearing the word of our, in our youth, He will prepare us. He promises to stay with us. Lord, we thank you for all of the opportunities you give us to learn about, about you and our, ourselves our life, where it is going, and what you have prepared for us. Teach us your word early so that we may look forward to our end, not with fear or discouragement, but with hope and joy. Above all, from our youth to our old age until our death, keep us ever mindful of what you have done for us in your Son, Jesus Christ, who overcame death and the grave for us all. We turn our attention to Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark, and the clouds return after the rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few, and those looking through the windows grow dim. When the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades. When men rise up at the sound of birds, but all their songs grow faint. When men are afraid of heights and of dangers in the streets. When the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags himself along and desire no longer is stirred. Then man goes to his eternal home. And mourners go about on the streets. Go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed, or the golden bowl is broken, before the picture is shattered at the spring, or the wheel broken as well, and the dust returns to ground it came from, and the spirit returns to God. Who is. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 90. You'll find it on page 90. Let's sing Psalm 90. Let's sing Psalm 90.
Our second lesson is recorded in the book of James, the brother of our Lord, James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. The brother of our Lord Jesus tells us, like he did to his first readers, we strive to be self-sufficient and develop detailed plans for our lives. Planning can be good stewardship, but not if it crowds, if our plans crowd out the things that the Lord has to do. James reminds us to seek what the Lord wants. The simple statement is a confession of faith and shows confidence in the Lord's care and blessing for us. Time and time again, the Lord has shown his fatherly divine goodness and mercy for us. He has given us life by his Son, Jesus. Now free from seeking our own needs, we are free to serve him and others. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of each day. Help us all, Lord, only to see each and every day as an opportunity given to us by you, your grace, in order to gain and grow in our faith and knowledge of your word, and to be able to live for the welfare of our fellow man and for your glory and honor. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why? You do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast and brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it. Sin. The word of the Lord. We will speak the verse this morning, and that will be followed by the Alleluia. Obviously, the seasonal verse we will use for Advent and Christmas, and this is the first Sunday after Christmas, and that will return back to the, the, the refrain, the triple Alleluia. The verse for today is the gospel acclamation at the bottom of page one of your bulletin. And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world wants after all such things. And your Father knows that you need them. But seek His kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. Hallelujah. and the nearness of eternity so that none of us 
us will fail to redeem our time of grace. To the word of our Lord, verse, beginning of verse 6. Then he told this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find it. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around and fertilize it. If there is food in next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The hymn of the day is hymn number 700, reminding us that it's the voice of Jesus that draws us to Him. Draws to the hymn number 700. Words. 
the Apostle John, inspired by the Holy Spirit, wrote to the church at Laodicea. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. That's fine. In the name of a God who is a faithful God and Lord, a God of free and faithful grace, as you heard me introduce him for years and years and years. And nothing's changed. He's still that God of free and faithful grace. Because he's also an unchanging God, just like his son, Jesus. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, if my glad that he doesn't change. And so are you. Let's find out in what ways with imagination. <coughs> New year has begun. Television shows, probably this coming week, if they haven't already, will bid you to, to think about the highlights of the previous year, 2022. Think about some of the events, the situations that took place this past year. Perhaps one of them that wasn't so nice. But it's an event that certainly has entered into your living room and mine, as well as our lives, whether we wanted to or not, is the event that is known as the war in Ukraine. It's affected us in many different ways, more than we would want to, even though it's across the big pond there. The question that I would ask you this morning on this particular day, especially having heard what happened there this past week, what do you think the state of mind is in the lay of in, in the Ukrainian mind on this particular day, the first day of 2023? What do you think is going on in their mind? How do you think they're feeling? I don't think that any of us would accuse the Ukrainians of living the high life at this particular point in time. The life of Riley. A life of luxury, wealth, and ease. Probably the exact opposite, right? What would be your state of mind if we were in the same circumstances here and that war was here rather than over there? Better yet, what would be the state of your faith if that was the case? I'm afraid that Satan has discovered an Achilles heel, an Achilles tendon in, in us human beings, and particularly in us human beings who live in America in this day and age. What do I mean by that statement I just made? Well, I'm going to permit the Apostle John to explain what I mean in his words to the seventh church of his seventh letter in Revelation chapter 3. We are entering a brand new year today. It's a perfect time for you and for me to do some some resolving and some self-examining. We're going to do that this morning. We're going to do it at the expense of the Laodiceans. I hope and pray, Lord willing, as we heard in the one of the readings this morning, Lord willing, that each of us will see how penitentially earnest we are to let, to permit, to allow Jesus to bless us even more this year than he did in the past. 
of the seven cities of the Revelation, seven letters to the seven churches in Asia, in Asia Minor, the city of Laodicea, the seventh church, was the wealthiest and the healthiest economically speaking. It was wealthy and healthy economically because of its banking industry, its wool manufacturing center, and it also happened to be a medical resource center for eye medicine of some kind. Because of the tremendous prospering economy, the Laodiceans and even the church at Laodicea was a church that enjoyed a life of wealth, luxury, and ease. But their material prosperity was certainly not good for their faith life and their relationship with their Lord and Savior. John wrote these words in verse 17. He said, you say I am rich, I've acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. Their wealth, their luxury, their state of ease made them feel self-satisfied and made them complacent. And unfortunately, it was their faith life that took the hit. Nothing is worse for the faith life of a, of a believer than material prosperity and a life of ease. Did you hear that? Yeah, those are really also blessings that the Lord gives to us. Just like the blessing of our reason. But you know that we can use these blessings in the wrong way and they can turn out to be our worst enemy. Material prosperity in a life of ease can be our worst enemy as believers in this world. It was for the Laodiceans. John reported the state of their faith and their spiritual lives was this. Verse 17b. He said, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. The Laodiceans were quick on the way to becoming spiritually bankrupt. Destitute of faith. And you know what was a real problem? You know what was the real sad thing about this situation? They didn't even realize their condition and their state and their problem. That's where the Apostle John came in. The Apostle John was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write seven letters, and the seventh letter went to the congregation of Laodicea. John addressed the seventh letter to the church's pastor. And it was the church's pastor who had the job to take these words of Jesus through John and to raise the red flag, to give the alert of God's holy law to the Laodiceans so that they would acknowledge and realize what was going on in their own lives. You see, they had a problem. The Laodicean malady was this. The problem is what they could see by had become more important, more valuable to them than what was unseen and eternal. They were seeking not first the kingdom of, of Christ and his righteousness. They were seeking what was here and now, what they could see, what they could enjoy now. And that took priority. That was the object of their pursuit. And you know what happened? Material prosperity led them to forget about what was coming, what was promised to them as believers. The Laodiceans needed literally a slap, not in the face, but in the faith. They needed a slap in the face. And that's exactly what John's intent was for this, this letter that he wrote to them. You see, this isn't just any old letter that an apostle by the name of John wrote to a congregation of Laodicea. This is a letter from Christ. And it's not just a letter. It is a love letter from Jesus to people that he loved. People that he 
held near and dear to them. People that he had redeemed with his holy precious blood, just like he redeemed you and me. He loved these people. And so he wrote them a love letter to lead them to realize their malady, their problem. To, to slap them in the face, to bring them to their spiritual senses, to lead them to confess their sin and to repent of their, their lack of priority or their wrong priority of pursuing temporal righteousness, temporal wealth, rather than seeking first his kingdom. And that's exactly what Jesus gave to them in this love letter. He said he reminded them, just as he does us in Hebrews chapter after, uh, 12, those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Jesus wanted them to realize that real riches, true, true wealth, doesn't come from pursuing and accumulating material wealth. But it comes from the blessings that he has to give them. Blessings that he wanted to give them as their Lord and Savior. And so this love letter came with the bid for them to be earnest and repent. Jesus wanted the Laodiceans to recognize through the Apostle John, through their called pastor, that this was an opportunity for them. Literally, an opportunity came knocking to the Laodiceans. Jesus tells us in verse 20, he says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. If the Laodiceans would just realize that Jesus was standing outside the door knocking, and they could realize that and open the door because they could hear the voice of Jesus. It's that voice of Jesus that would enable them, empower them, and motivate them to be able to open that door to Jesus. If they would just hear his voice and open the door, then they would see Jesus, an enthusiastic Jesus, wanting, waiting to come in to bless them with blessings of his work that he has earned for them. An enthusiastic Jesus wanting to give them true wealth, real riches, rather than the temporal stuff that they were relying on for their futures. Jesus wanted to provide them with real riches, a lasting set of clothes that they would wear in eternity, a real robe of righteousness, and medicine for their eyes so that they just didn't have 2020 physical vision, but they didn't really have 2020 spiritual vision so they could continue to see him for who he is, that he's their Lord and Savior. People's Bible gives us a pretty good summary of, of the state of affairs in Laodicea. I'm going to quote them. The Laodicean church was complacent and rich. They felt self-satisfied. And they didn't have... And I, parentheses, I put in my edition here because I'm being a little bit more positive. They felt self-satisfied and they were rapidly losing Christ's presence among them. Christ knocked at the door of their hearts, but they were so busy enjoying worldly pleasures that they didn't notice that he was trying to enter. The pleasures of this world, money, security, material possessions, can be dangerous because their temporary satisfaction makes us indifferent to God's offer of lasting satisfaction. And that is what was happening in Laodicea. And that was the problem, wasn't it? As I mentioned earlier, that problem didn't go away when the calendars were torn out back in their day. Yeah, that problem continues today, doesn't it? You see, Satan is a lot smarter than you and I think he is. He knows exactly every weakness of ours, and he knows that each of us have a pretty common spiritual weakness 
in all of us. The proverbial Achilles tendon, as, as I told, said it was before, just like he knew that the people at Laodicea had that. Has this common spiritual virus affected you? Has it affected me? Well, that's a question that only you can answer. It's a question that only I can answer. It's a question that you and I have to answer for ourselves. And it takes some self-examination, doesn't it? So how in the world are we going to figure out if we've caught this spiritual virus and it's affecting us? Well, if we as Christians are becoming less and less serious about, maybe even indifferent to, growing and gaining in our knowledge of the Word, then you've caught the virus. Perhaps another way of deciding whether we've got this spiritual virus in us and it's affecting us. Call it our stewardship quotient. Asking yourself the question of how you are using your, your, your blessings of stewardship. Starting with your time of grace. Every single one of us have, have 24 hours a day, 168 hours a week. How are you using the time of grace that the Lord has given to you? Are you using it for your own selves, your selfish purposes and agenda? More than you're using it as Christians to, to promote the cause of Christ and His church? How are you using your talents and abilities, your financial resources, and all the other blessings that, that the Lord has blessed you with? Are we using it for our own selfish interests and benefits more than we're using it as Christians, soldiers in the army of our Lord? Only you can answer that question, those questions. Perhaps I'll put it a different way. Are you living today using your time of grace as if Jesus is coming back tonight or tomorrow? Because if you got in mind that Jesus is coming back tonight or tomorrow, you're going to be living differently than if you don't think he's going to come back in a long time or your prospect in eternity has zero in your mind. What are you thinking? How are you living? By God's grace, and that's one thing that doesn't change, does it? Even though you and I do, gray hairs get more. Jesus doesn't change. His grace doesn't change. He remains faithful in keeping us in His grace and mercy. And by His grace and mercy, we cross over into a, a new calendar year. Today. Another privilege we've got is that we, our ears got to hear the Word of God. And one of those one of those things that we heard is the love letter of our Savior to the Laodiceans. This love letter to the Laodiceans reminds us that Jesus gives us the same opportunity that he gave to them. He's standing at the door of your home, your heart, and your lives, as well as mine. And he's knocking on that door, waiting, wanting, to come in and bless you beyond your wildest dreams. And he does this every single day. Every single day of, of the calendar year. Every single day of 2022 he did it. Every single day of 2023 he's going to do it. Stand at the door of your heart, your home, your life. Wanting you to open the door to him. To his word. Let him come in and bless you with true Riches and real wealth. You know, of all the days to think about Jesus standing at the door, today is the perfect opportunity to do that thinking. Every day Jesus is going to be standing at the door of our hearts in this new year, waiting, wanting to bless us. Bless us with all the, the blessings of the of the results of the work that he has done for us. He's lived his life for us. He died a death for you and for me. And he rose from the grave on Easter Sunday morning for you and for me. And because of that work, 
Jesus had blessings for you and for me. And he wants you to have those blessings. He wants you to, to have them. And we can have them if we open our doors of our homes, our hearts, and our lives. And we can. Because we hear the voice of Jesus, don't we? The voice of Jesus. The voice of the gospel. The voice that tells us, look at what I've done for you. I've lived for you to provide you with righteousness that you could never earn or work on your own. I hung on a cross to pay for all the things that would keep you out of heaven, and I paid for them in full. I rose from the dead so that not only you, but everybody in the world knows exactly who I am, that I am the true Son of God. And everything that I did is good for your redemption so that you have the forgiveness of sins. And everybody has the forgiveness of sins. All people, all sins of all time. Because I rose from the dead. That's the voice that you and I can hear Jesus say in the words that come to us from God's word in the sacrament. We hear that voice. And so you and I have the motivation, the power, and the ability to be able to open that door to Jesus say, come on in and bless me. Because that's exactly what he wants to do for us. The best practical advice as we stand on this new day of a brand new year is the advice that John, the Apostle, gave to the lay of Isaiah. The best advice that I have for you and for myself are, are these words. So be earnest and repent. What does it mean to be earnest? Well, some synonyms that the New Testament uses are be sober. How many times in James people we grew up with that? How many times did that word used in Scripture? Be sober, be vigilant. Or the synonym of being sincere. I like the best one. Be serious. So let's get serious. Let's get serious about our faith life. Let's get serious about our relationship with the Lord. Let's get serious enough about our commitment to hear the voice of Jesus and let that voice empower, enable, and motivate us to open the door to Jesus and his blessings. You and I know what repent means. It means to have daily a change of, of heart and mind regarding what we're thinking, what we're doing. Not to be led by our, our old Adams and its passions and lusts and desires, but rather be led by the Spirit and our new man. So be earnest and repent. Good advice for you and for me. Not just today, but tomorrow and the next day. In fact, every day of this morning we hear. I don't think that anybody would disagree with me at all that we all could be a little bit more, perhaps maybe a lot more, serious about our repentance and about our relationship with our Lord and our Savior. What about the Laodiceans? Did they hear Jesus knocking on the door? Did they let Jesus come in and let him bless them? We don't know, do we? That is not given to us. That, that privilege is not ours to know. What is the, what is the point and matter is, is what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hearing the voice of Jesus will motivate and enable us to open the door and allow him to come in and bless us with all the blessings that he has earned for you and for me in life, death, and resurrection. 2022 is in the books. I'm sure, as I said earlier, that there are going to be television shows and the media is going to advise you and me to think back this past year and look at the, all the highlights of what happened in this past year. And I'm sure that, that you and I can do that with our own lives. What happened to you this past year that was a highlight? 
What happened to you this past year that was a good thing that you're going to remember. What happened this past year as, as a bad thing that you, you hope will never happen again. New Year's Day is the perfect time to look back on 2022. But you know, of all the things that I remember about 2022, of all the highlights that I'm going to put the spotlight on, there's one thing that... I'm going to remember 2022 more than anything else. And I know you are too. Because we think the same way. And that is everything. Every time that I mess up. Every time that I sin. Every time I did something that I should have done. Sins of commission. Every one of my sins of of omission, failures to do what I should have done. And even the sins I don't even know I did. Probably more than any of them. I know. I trust. I believe that Jesus' blood has covered every one of them. I know and I trust and I believe that Jesus' blood has covered every one of your sins as well. That is a highlight of last year. Every single day of last year, Jesus' blood covered your sins and mine. Every single sin. And today is the perfect time to remember that perfect thought of Jesus' blood covering our sins. Every sin in 2022. Now is the perfect time to look forward to 2023 of Jesus doing the exact same thing every day. Every day. He promises a clean slate. His blood. Pain for every single one of our sins. Covering and atoning for every single one of them so that you and I can look forward no matter what's coming in 2023 with hope and joy. In fact, let's make this resolution. If we can do such a thing, perhaps maybe... Um, simply say a, a prayer. May the Spirit keep us hearing Jesus' voice, motivating, enabling, and empowering us all to be more penitentially earnest, serious followers for Jesus in 2023. Amen. Let's rise and confess using the words of the Knights of the Creed. You find it on page 162 and 163. One God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate with the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for today's prayer to church. O oh God, our gracious Father, as we stand on the threshold of a brand new year, we are painfully mindful 
of our stubborn and sinful natures which have often led us to do the very things that you have forbidden and to neglect the things you have commanded. Do not be angry with us on account of our many sins, but for Jesus' sake, for you pardon us. Heavenly Father, we are also mindful of the blessings that you have showered upon us in the past, and also our need for your continual presence and blessing in the future. Years come and go, but you are God, are ever the same. We are confident that from day to day, year to year, your tender kindness and compassion and mercy will rest upon us because you have adopted us as your children through Jesus. We thank and praise you for this and we desire to serve you and obey you. Watch over us, lest, like the Laodiceans did, that we become victims of pride, of lust, of selfishness, of lovelessness, or any other evil attitude of our sinful flesh. Fill us with love towards others so that we are willing to lend our help to those who are required it and be generous towards those who are in need. Keep us from all bitterness towards those who have wronged us and move us to forgive them as you have forgiven us. Give us grace through the Spirit to resist the devil.